Hey folks and welcome to the Compass Games Expo 2023 loot video for your demand. So I went into Compass Expo with a pretty short list of things I wanted to pick up from Compass themselves, but with the knowledge that there is a, let's call it to the flea market, where people that come bring games and sell those games. So I knew that was happening as well. And you never know what's going to show up in that kind of thing. So I, even though I had a short list from Compass, I did end up buying a couple of extra things, and I took a couple of boxes of games to sell, all of which sold, so I actually did not go over budget, came home with more money than I left with, um, and uh, one more additional box of games that I didn't leave with. So I'm going to start with the Compass stuff itself, and we'll start with the magazines. So one that was on the Compass Games acquisition list was Paper Wars number 103. This has the game Second Fallujah in it. I've talked to Mo about this game. Um, and he says it's very good. It, modern is not really my thing. This is more or less what I would describe as a tactical game. Uh, but this one's supposed to be pretty good, and I don't mind adding this to the Ardwolf Slayer library. However, also in this issue are some expansion counters and variant counters for the Third World War, which I obviously needed. Um, and I think these are for uh, Defending America, Defending America Expansion, which is presumably also in this issue. So I didn't even know about that. Um, so this uh, this is a pretty interesting looking uh, game. And like I said, I don't mind the occasional foray into modern. It's just not one of my big topics. Um, so Second Fallujah added to the Ardwell Slayer Library. Also from Paper Wars is issue number 96. This contains the game Rally Round the Flag. Um, and this is the battles of Perryville and Stones River, making it therefore a tactical game. So there are two separate maps for this. They're we're both relatively small games. The counters look pretty good. Um, and, you know, I like Civil War games, so I picked this up, and, you know, all this stuff was half off. All this stuff was half off. Um, also, since I was standing there, um, and I didn't have this, this is Paper Wars 87. This contains Belmont, Grant's Baptism of Command from the Battle of Belmont in 1861. And then I, I, I opened this up and started looking at it, look at the counters. Counters, the counters look fine, right? These are fine counters. They're fine. But then you look at the map. And this was a bit of a surprise. I didn't know this was going to be the case. This is a Rick Barber map. Um, so, kind of based on that, I picked this up. Um, I'm interested in the battle. I don't have a game on this battle. So cool that I have a game on this battle now. And I only have one game on Perryville, too, for that matter. Another one that was on the acquisition list is issue number 91. Jihad, the rise of Islam, 632 to 732 A.D. Now, I believe this is an old, old, this is an older game from where I don't remember at this exact moment that has been reprinted by Compass, um, and it is a hex counter game. Uh, here's some uh, here's an errata sheet which looks like a photocopy actually, but it is a hex counter game um, with half inch counters, um, and it is a topic I am interested in. The uh, White Dog Game, the first Jihad, is another one that I've got. Uh, and as a magazine game, I'm happy to not only add this to the library, but uh, it'll be nice to read the magazines as well. So four issues of Paper Wars have been added to the Ardwell Slayer library. But wait, there's more. In the flea market, there were a number of people selling magazine games. And there are still a number of old strategy and tactics magazines that I am interested in and have not yet managed to acquire for the price I would like to pay. These arrived at the prices I would like to pay. Um, here is Desert Fox from S&T number 87, and here is The American Civil War from S&T number 43. This is much older than Desert Fox. Desert Fox was redone by Decision um, in a edition that has drawn conflicting opinions, so I wanted to be able to compare it to the original, which I now have. Uh, American Civil War is another one that I kind of wanted to see for study purposes. Both of these games are unpunched, um, so that is cool. Single-sided counters, which is not something I'm absolutely crazy about, but I figure we're not going to do unbaggings of these, so I'm going to at least briefly show you what the... American Civil War counters look like, and they do actually look nice. I mean, remember, this game is from, what, 1974? So, yeah, 1974. So, well, not fancy, they do look, and they're fairly thin, they do actually look nice. And registration is not a problem on this particular issue, uh, or this particular copy, which is also good. Now, somebody whose name I won't tell you, because I want to respect their privacy, 
also threw a couple of interesting things my way that are SPI related. Um, so thank you, you know who you are. One of those games is Central Front Volume 2, Hoff Gap. This is maybe the hardest game in the series to find because it did not appear in s &T. It was only available in this one-inch SPI box. Um, there has been a very nice treatment of it in here. The counters are organized very nicely, and they are not clipped, which is, makes me happy because then I can do it myself. Um, and there's some what looks like some extra materials in here as well. And it also... Does this have a whole copy of... Fifth core in it. Holy crap. Okay, there's fifth core map here. What's up with that? Hoff gap, hop. Ooh, there's two pairs of Hoff gap exclusive rules. So I don't think there's a copy of fifth core in here, but. And there's two central front uh, rules too. Um, this individual knew that I had been missing those, so happy to get them. Um, interestingly, the other is even more interesting is perhaps the other piece there. This is BAOR, British Army of the Rhine, from ST number 88. This was only available in the magazine, and our friend here has created a box for it, and they have done a rather nice job. This is an extra Hoff Gap box that they have put a label on and made it look very nice. And upon further review, one looks in here, and one finds that not only do we have... Interesting. So what we have in here is North German Plain as well. This appeared in a later S&T, after SPI, and we have what well, looks like a copy of the rules, the original counters, and the map as well. So there's most of a complete set, barring 5th Corps and Denau Front, um, of the Central Front series here. So this comes highly recommended. The Central Front series, that is, comes highly recommended. So, so thank you. Again, you know who you are. For, uh, for passing these my way. I am very interested to be able to eventually do a video on this series. It is on the list. Also from the flea market were a number of the things, if not almost everything, from Victory Games that I still wanted to pick up. Now, the one stupid thing I bought was Vietnam 65-75. to I have this, of course, in the new GMT version, and were I to play it, which I think will eventually happen, at least in some capacity, I will obviously be playing that version. However, I found that for the price, I could not say no to an original Victory Games Vietnam um, for the sake of research and reference alone, and this is also unpunched, so fantastic. Also from Victory Games is a game I have played, Pax Britannica, the colonial era, 1880 to the Great War. This is an incredibly fussy and spreadsheety game, is how I would describe it, but it is nevertheless quite interesting game with an interesting map. Um, so I'm probably going to play this again at some point. Might not play this copy, but now I have my own copy of Pax Britannica. And finally, the one thing that was probably at the top of the list of things from Victory Games that I would like to get that I don't have yet is Lee vs. Grant. This is the Wilderness Campaign. It is a Joe Balkowski design, and one can credibly consider it a precursor to the great campaigns of the American Civil War series, which is one of my favorite series. So all of these were extremely reasonably priced. Um, and this, I think, is punched, uh, but clearly was not played. Contains a translucent yellow dye. Um, the, this counter tray is sealed fairly carefully. Um, so pretty interesting game. Again, you know, reasonable price on this. And if we look at the map, the map actually looks pretty good too for a Victory Games map. Victory Games is a little hit and miss on maps. Their maps were, to the best of my recollection, always playable, but not necessarily attractive. This one is reasonably attractive. Not sure who the map artist was. Could have been Ted Caller. He did a lot of Victory Games uh, map art. Looking at graphic design, we are crediting Ted Kohler indeed. Playtesting. Playtesters are interesting here. Arnold Bloomberg, Jeff Bridge, Gary McIntyre, Eric Faust, Lou Fisher, Robert Greco, Mark Herman, and Michael Moore. I guess that's not particularly surprising, but I think it's neat to see. Here is an Avalon Hill 1988 games and parts list. These are always cool to look through. So let's now talk about what I picked up from Compass that isn't magazine games. At the top of the list is the very newest release from Compass Games. This is Russia Besieged, the Finnish expansion. 
One would have hoped they might have come up with a more evocative name than Finnish Expansion. However, it nevertheless has tons of stuff in it. Um, and anybody that uh, considers Russia Besiege kind of their main East Front strategic game um, probably is going to want this. There's an expansion map in here, a, a number of booklets that uh, contain a number of additional options and scenarios and historical notes and a bunch of stuff. I'm reasonably impressed with what I see here uh, from the Finnish expansion. Greg Smith was kind enough to pass me a copy of a Western Front Ace. This is, I think, his latest release from Compass. Um, you'll see an unboxing of this. It's a quite robust package. Took a while to do, but I think when you look at the inside of the box, you'll see why it took a while to do, because there's like a lot in here. So there'll be an unboxing of this. I don't promise any particular schedule, but it's already filmed since the shrink wrap is off, as you can tell. Um, so I am reasonably impressed with what I've seen here in Western Front Ace, and Greg is the maestro of this kind of design. Thanks to the prices, I became ensnared by the idea of a quick game that I could play between big games or big game turns. So I picked up Christopher Moeller's two games, Napoleon's Eagles. These are, this is a Napoleonic card game. Um, the first one, Storm in the East, has Borodino and Leipzig in it. The second one, 100 Days, has all four battles of the Waterloo campaign in it. Um, I've given them a quick look. They, it looks really good. The games are supposed to be good. This is something I will bring with me to conventions from now on so that I can have something to do if I don't have anything to do. Um, a filler game, as it were. And that may be shortchanging it a little bit, but uh, if so, I apologize. Another unplanned acquisition was Silent War 2.0. You'll probably see an unboxing of this, too. This is the new version of Silent War. It contains the IJN expansion, which I wouldn't call strictly necessary, but enhances the flavor of Silent War considerably, I think. Um, it's a, also a very full package. The new version has a mounted map. There'll probably be an unboxing of this, too. If not, there are already some unboxings of this floating about. And finally, because obviously we're not about to do anything in an organized order, I will show you what I picked up from the gamers. Not MMP, the gamers. The gamers games in certain series, including the Civil War Brigade series, the Tactical Combat series, and the Napoleonic Brigade series, tend to pop up a lot in these kinds of things. And those games tend to not, with some exceptions, they tend to not go for tons and tons and tons of money. So again, for very reasonable prices, I picked up Embrace an Angry Wind. This is the Battles of Spring Hill and Franklin, which I have a operational treatment of in Hood Strikes North, but I do not have a tactical treatment of. Um, this is a DNSIC design. Um, this is, I believe, unpunched. The box is a little beat up, and then it's got a bit of a bit of a pong to it. But uh, and it's in a one inch box too. Uh, but the game looks interesting. The series looks interesting. I wanted to try it for a while. At this point, with four games in the series, I probably have enough to not buy any more without. Um, without trying it, but these were inexpensive, so there's that. Also, Gaines Mill. This is one of a three-volume sub-series inside the Civil War Brigade series that deals with the Seven Days Battles in the Peninsula Campaign. Um, this is the first of those. Um, so, also a fairly interesting-looking game, and this is a Dave Powell design. And once again, we look at this, and we're going to find that it's unpunched. And the maps are not, sometimes one looks at these old Civil War Brigade series games and finds that the maps are really grating, and that is not the case here, I am pleased to report. There is an updated rules uh, for the series on Gamers Archive, but I haven't downloaded those yet. There's also the four-game Napoleonic Brigade series, which is a bit of a fork off of the Civil War Brigade series, and I had, going into this thing, all f three of the four games. The one I was missing was Austerlitz, which shockingly is about Austerlitz. So the box here is pretty banged up, but the innards are pretty good looking. And when I say, ah, map, this is what I'm talking about. Um, the map is, shall we say, punchy. Um, but the system itself looks fairly interesting. Um, the other games in the series include um, Marengo, Talavera, and my personally most interesting 
Napoleonic Battle Asper Nestling. So if I try this series, and I don't have a really satisfying treatment of Asper Nestling, I've got the Library of Napoleonic Battles treatment in The Last Success, but I find that that scale does not really allow that particular battle to shine, um, whereas a brigade scale treatment of it might. Lastly, from the gamers, I picked up Shrink Rept Copy, again, this was all cheap. Uh, Screaming Eagles, the 101st Airborne's Division, 101st Airborne's Defense of Hell's Highway. This is part of Operation Market Garden. The game is an example of the tactical combat series. There are still a couple of those that I'd like. I don't want any of the super duper old ones, uh, but I basically have everything in this series that I need except for maybe GB41. Um, this was on the list of ones that I did want. So we picked that up. Now, <clears throat> that's a lot of loot, right? Nevertheless, I took two boxes of games to sell with me and came home with three boxes of games. So considering that I did pretty well money-wise and considering that I only brought one extra box of games home, I'm pretty happy with the results there. So hopefully you found this interesting. I appreciate you watching. I'd like to give a special shout out to the patrons of Art Wolf Slayer, without whose support and encouragement it would not be possible to continue doing this kind of stuff. So thank you, patrons. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.